Colin here again, and I'm coming at you with another video this time today on dun 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 perspective. Yes, a lot of people struggle with perspective, but I'm here to tell you that it's way easier than you ever can imagine. I'm going to start by just drawing a simple line with a ruler on my piece of paper uh, right there. And that is the basis of all perspective. I'm using a mechanical pencil today because it's a little bit thinner for illustration, but you can really do this with any kind of pencil. This line here is your horizon line. Yep, when you look out towards the horizon, this is the edge of the earth. This is as far as you can see. Basically what we're getting at is up here is sky and down here, land. This line also represents what you're, the middle of your eye and what that's seeing. So if you can imagine a human eyeball, let's draw it off to the side here, right like that. And then there's the iris and there's the pupil right in the middle. That's where that, let's give it some veins, make it look kind of fun. Um, that is what the horizon line represents, right? So if you look down, you're where your horizon line is going to change. But this line represents the extreme that your eye can see. Uh, very easy. Let's start off with something simple. One point perspective. Usually when you talk perspective, you talk about one point, two point, three point, etc. One point is very easy. And that is, let's put our point right here. That is both of your eyes, if you have two of them, are looking at the same thing and they're both kind of narrowing in at this point. If you imagine the top of a human's head, here's a little nose and here's the eyes right there, Give them little orbits. That is both pupils are looking straight ahead and eventually, eventually those lines cross at a point. Usually it's as far as you can see. So you're not going to see past this, but that's they both kind of narrow in. That's what this point represents. So essentially, anything that's coming off of here, anything that are parallel lines, are eventually going to move directly into that, that point. You know, whether it's in the whether it's in the sky, whether it's in on the ground, it's gonna move toward that point. When doing one point perspective, keep in mind that anything that is uh, flat, the line is parallel to your horizon line. And anything that's standing upright is perpendicular to it. That means at a 90 degree angle. So you're only really worrying about one set of angles, everything going toward this. You can make that a little telephone pole there. Remember telephone poles? I remember. If we're going to do something like draw, say, a structure, a box, the objects that are flat towards you lay parallel with perpendicular lines. Let's make it go up a little bit further. And then the sides of it that are kind of peeling away back follow that perspective line. Now, if we want to get where the top of the box is, you draw from the angle back there, always going back to that one nice point. We'll draw our perpendicular line and our parallel line. And if you want to get crazy, you can erase what's inside that box there. For the most part, that's pretty much it. Perspective is an easy concept but there's just a lot of fiddly bits with it. Some of them you have to worry about, some of them you don't. And I would suggest if you're just learning perspective, uh, to start learning all the little tips and tricks that you can when you're learning. Um, and that way when you're doing it later, when you're doing it without necessarily ruling out every single line with the ruler, when you're just kind of going off what you, uh, you know, can imagine or making quickie lines for yourself, that sort of thing you're still aware of those little tricks and, and can use them. I'll give you one right now. Here's a freebie on me. Uh, to find the center of a box or anything, connect the opposite points and this is the center. 
So if you want to say have a, another line going down right from the middle, say a, a fin or something like that, that is how you do that. And then you can erase your construction lines here, erase what's behind it. And there you go. And hopefully you guys are starting to see that you can start to make some complex shapes with this. Um, let me give you another quick one point perspective trick. We'll use the lines that have already been made here, like so. And let me just rule these out so they get nice. If you can imagine that this is flat on the floor, this little thing we got going. Actually, let's, let's raise it up. Let's make it a little plinth or something. Help illustrate the point even more. And you'll want to draw a circle. This is where a lot of people start to freak out and have trouble. We use what we did before, which is connecting the opposite corners to find the middle. Boom. And boom. And then rule across our parallel line. And then remember that middle line comes from our perspective point down. Now this tells us the little edges here of the box. We can use those to draw in our circle. Where the circle hits are going to be those points there. So it's kind of almost a little bit smaller on the back on the back side, if that makes sense. There we go, just like that. We can use this to great effect to start adding in things like columns and, and stuff like that. Um, but generally speaking, it's, a, it's an easy way to figure out that, yeah, as something recedes into the background, that center line, that middle line of it, it's a little bit shorter the further away it goes and a little bit longer the closer it is to you, the, the areas between. Hopefully that makes sense, I don't know. But there we go. Let's get into two point perspective here real quick. I'm gonna draw two additional points. Now this is good for when you're drawing things that are not completely directly flat to you, when you're drawing things that are kind of on an angle. A lot of houses and stuff follow this. Basically, anything that's toward the left heads toward that perspective point. Anything to your right heads toward that perspective point. Let's do it up here as well. We're still gonna draw a perpendicular line. And we're kinda gonna wanna figure that out first with only one of the angles. And then where the two connect, that's where we're gonna draw back. All right, great, from here, it's easy enough to just figure out where you want your edges. You can make them a little bit darker here to say that's the box. And that's it for two point perspective. From here, we can do our trick again as this is very much angled where we add in our connect the opposite corners, zip, zoop, and you can definitely see that it's the middle line here. The area that's toward us is way longer. This, this area here is way longer than this little short area. From here, let's carry that up. Let's say right there, and then let's put a roof on this house. Got that. But how do we find the backside? I hear you saying through the internet. Uh, when drawing cubes and stuff like this, it's always good practice to get in the habit of doing that back end. So we're going to put in these lines nice and light because eventually we're going to 
uh, erase them or remove them. They're just for construction. So there we go. So that's the perspective of that back wall. Let's go to the opposite corner, that front corner. So we know that here's where the back wall comes up, right? There's our back wall. Add in our X like before. Find that nice middle. You could take it up. And then with our one angle, it shouldn't be too hard to connect. So right there, and then we can finish it off this way. If you're imagining this backside too, you can imagine the back slope coming down that way. Maybe if it's a glass house, that's what it would look like. But you can always then get in there, erase all this stuff. Not super necessary for all these construction lines. It's just to illustrate a point. And that's why it's nice to add things in nice and light to start, and then you can fill them out further. You could go crazy with this and start adding in massive complex shapes. Say you want to add like a, a silo to this barn. You know, you may want to draw out that whole flat surface down here, figure out the middle to do a curve, or you could just, you know, draw in like a simple curve there. It's okay. Straight up. And then up here, where it's way more prominent, got to remember it's going to curve up. If, if that doesn't make sense to you, then definitely add in those perspective lines. Draw in your square as we did before, however wide you want it. Add in that to figure out that the line curves around this way. up to the top. So you may want to do those kind of things until you start figuring this stuff out and you can just kind of do it on your own because that's that's essentially what's going to have to happen. Adding in all these lines and using the ruler and all that is great, especially for very complex things, very technical things uh, that, that require like almost like drafting. You need to have very precise angles and stuff. Um, but as you get used to this, you can just start adding things in and you're like, oh, okay, that line probably goes generally that way, generally goes that way. Let's add in a window like that. Um, and you can just kind of rough it in um, pretty easy. You'll get used to that kind of work. But yeah, definitely at the beginning, start adding in these lines and just figuring this stuff out and really pay attention to the angles that the lines are, are moving at and how you don't want to mirror, if, if the, if the uh, bottom of the window is here, you don't want to mirror this bottom line one to one. It's always going to be angled just a little bit, so it's pointing toward that, that perspective point back there. And from there, it's just a matter of going nuts. I find this kind of uh, doing this perspective stuff a lot of fun because you can just start going wild and you know letting shapes kind of come out of your your mind and having a lot of fun with it. One last thing I'm going to show you, and that is three point perspective. Now we're getting into some intense, crazy stuff, you guys. So let me flip over here to a new sheet. And let's get to it. I'm going to draw in a horizon line. Now this is a little bit higher than we're using before. I put in my perspective points, let's say there and there. I'm gonna do one near the middle of the page, right down here at the bottom, near the center. Now this is imagining that I'm on top of a building looking down. So if you can imagine the top of a skyscraper is square, we're gonna start putting in some lines See where they cross. That should be good. Yeah, I'm imagining I'm up on top of a, a tall skyscraper uh, and I'm looking down on another skyscraper, still tall, but where I'm standing, it's currently taller. 
So there is the top of our building, right like that. And then it's all tapering down, down, down to this point here on the perspective. Now this vanishes to nothing. This building wouldn't necessarily vanish away to nothing unless you're so high up, so incredibly high up that it does that. But I don't think many buildings do that. Even from the top of like the Empire State Building, you could still see the bottom, the street level of your building. So let's add in little lines there, connect them. And there we go, that'll be our street down there. If you want to get nuts, like Michael Keaton said to the Joker, let's get nuts. Let's add in a whole little street down here. All conforming, going back to the that vanishing point there, that perspective point off to the edge. We can imagine all sorts of little cars driving around and what have you. And you can add these little things in how you want you know there's the start of a street let's make a little street going over this way one thing too to keep in mind especially for you guys if you're just starting out make sure that when you're drawing you're aware of which side of the ruler your perspective points on you don't want to put your ruler lined up here and then draw the line at the bottom of your ruler that's going to cause trouble so if it's lined up with the top make sure your your ruler is lined up with the top you know and then maybe we'll do something coming over this way another street maybe there's a little park there i don't know but you start to almost see that like grid, those grid lines. Let's say we want to put another building over here in this lot right there. Let's make it taller than this building. So from here, we have the corner of our building connected to our vanishing point perspective line. Make it go up, up, up. Same with the front of the building, which is over here the next point where our roads connect. Up, 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 up. And then let's, let's say it's right there is the edge. Connect it in. Can I erase these guys? And you start to see that edge and then we'll just square up the top Going back, let's make it a real long building. Going all the way back that way. There we go. And then here's that edge and we gotta connect it down. Now I won't draw through my first building so you can see it's kind of behind there, but yep. And there we have the start of like a nice city we're looking down on. It's a little weird, a little wonky. We're kind of at an angle from there, but that's generally how a three-point perspective works. I hope this has helped you guys. Join me on Thursday when I'm going to be doing a little bit of practice drawing. Maybe we'll draw something cool like a spaceship or a castle. I'll show you some more tips and tricks as I'm drawing around and having fun with it. Hope this helped you guys. Uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, hey, hope you guys get to do some drawing soon. Uh, this is Colin, and I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.